Right now, there are over 5 million birds leaving Australian shores. Every year these birds, some barely bigger than a sparrow, embark on an epic 13,000 kilometre flight to the Arctic. That's the equivalent of doing 309 consecutive marathons with only one or two drink stations along the way. And what's more, once they have nested and raised their young, they turn around and do it all again. Welcome to Farewell Shorebirds. We're looking here at images of red knots that have recently arrived at the Yellow Sea. These birds have spent the last few days feeding after their journey from Australia. The entire population of one subspecies of red knot used this one site in Bohai Bay in China to refuel before their long flight to their Arctic breeding grounds. If we lose this site, we lose these birds. Sean, Sean. Ah. Hi there, I'm Sean Dooley from BirdLife Australia coming to you from the Farewell Shorebirds Mothership here at Edithar Wetlands, where I can report that there are no migratory shorebirds left. In scenes that are replicated right across Australia, the migratory shorebirds have all moved out of the country and are heading up the East Asian Australasian Flyway towards their breeding grounds in the Arctic Circle. But there are some birds that do stay in Australia, the juvenile birds that are too young to breed and won't bother to make that perilous journey, or birds that just haven't been in good enough condition to attempt the journey. So we've sent intrepid uh, bird life reporter Steve Davidson up north to see what's happening up there. Steve, you're in Cairns, can you tell us how are the shorebirds doing up in the north? Okay, Sean. Um, look mate, there's uh, not much around here in Cairns. Uh, apparently they waved the shorebirds goodbye a couple of weeks ago. So, um, might be a bit late. Yeah. Thankfully, somebody has been doing a good job at tracking these birds. Last week we told you about the little curlews that had had satellite transmitters attached to them. Well, we've had the first readings from those little curlews, and while two of the birds are still hanging around in the broom area, and who can blame them really, one of the birds has been tracked flying over Indonesia and is now currently thought to be resting in the Philippines where it's feeding to refuel itself for the rest of the journey. The little curlew is following the East Asian Australasian flyway. There are nine major migratory bird flyways in the world and the East Asian Australasian one involves 22 countries from Australia all the way up to the Arctic Circle. The main site of importance on the flyway is the Yellow Sea in China and Korea. And this is where many of the species of migratory shorebirds stop and refuel, some of them flying directly from Australia to the Yellow Sea in one hop, a distance of 6,000 or more kilometres. Here to tell us more about the importance of this site is Golo Mora from the Australasian Wader Studies Group. Number one. It's the location. It's there at the halfway mark between Australia and the Arctic breeding grounds of the, of the migratory shorebirds. Number two, it's the vastness of it. It's a huge expanse of mudflats and wetlands and we've got about five million birds in, in Australia that need to fit in somewhere. The diversity of wetland habitats in the Yellow Sea is um, crucially important as well. The main threat for shorebirds in the Yellow Sea is clearly habitat destruction. So what that means is a reclamation of mudflats. People build sea walls, dry out the mudflats and fill them in for housing developments, for industrial developments, for roads, for golf courses, you name it. What's so amazing about this reclamation is the scale and the size, which is pretty much unprecedented. The species that we are most worried about are the um, great knot, the red knot, the curly sandpiper. And what's um, been happening for those species is that um, the amount of suitable habitat for them has shrunk down to one or two areas that are now left for them to stop over, where the remaining population has to funnel through. Unfortunately, the Chinese government has not signed up to the Convention for Migratory Species. But they have signed a bilateral agreement to protect migratory shorebirds and other migratory species with Australia. 
So it's incumbent on the Australian government to put pressure on the Chinese authorities to make sure that they preserve the remnants of the Yellow Sea habitat for shorebirds. Here to tell us more about what we can do to help with that cause is Samantha Vine, the Head of Conservation from BirdLife Australia. We know that shorebirds are declining because they're losing feeding grounds overseas. But even here in Australia, we're destroying their habitat at an alarming rate. However, we do have an opportunity to change that. Right now, the Australian government is reviewing its shorebird protection policy. So if you care about shorebirds, join us in petitioning the Australian government to show national leadership for the protection of these magnificent birds. To sign the petition and find out more about what you can do to help birds like the red knot, go to our website farewellshorebirds.org.au. And now, here to tell us more about these fascinating birds is Danny Rogers, our shorebird expert. Red knot. And red knot would probably be the very coolest of all the shorebirds. I might be saying that because I did my PhD on them. But they are amazingly specialised. They uh, only eat uh, little bivalves, little clams, and uh, they're very good at detecting them. They can detect buried hard objects five centimetres from their bill. Uh, they can't see them, they can't smell them, they just sort of send in a, an echo locating pulse with the tip of their bill and sort of use the pressure waves to detect where buried hard objects are. Don't forget to head to our website and check out how the little curlews are doing on their migration north. And also find out how you can be in the running to win a pair of fabulous Swarovski binoculars. Until next time, see you later.